What's up, happy people, and welcome back to Tip Lady Catch and Release. So today is Sunday, and that means it's Father's Day, and it's the verse of the week. So all you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Now, let's get into the video. So our verse comes from 2 Kings 3, 13 through 20. Now, I know it's a lot, but y'all just will have to hang with me here. Here it is. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What I have to do with thee, get thee to the prophets of thy father, and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them to the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. I would not look toward thee, nor see thee, but bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, Ye shall not wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water. And ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabs into your hand. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered. Behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. I know that's a lot, but the Holy Spirit showed me that the things all of a sudden in our lives, He can change. But it has to start somewhere. So if there's something in your life like these kings in this verse, they've all gathered together. And on their way to a war, they run out of water. But they've already marched seven days through the desert, but then suddenly they realized, we need a word from God or we're not going to make it. We need God to intervene or we aren't going to make it. And they realized that suddenly. But what had started before their moment of realization was subtle. It wasn't turning away from God that resulted in them being in a vulnerable spot all of a sudden. So most of the stuff that we recognize all of a sudden comes from something that probably wasn't all of a sudden. It's more like secret to sudden. When you pray, don't be like the Pharisees and go out and go, Hey, does anybody see me serving? Secret to sudden. Come on, somebody. Maybe one day if you do it enough in the secret place. What is secret? God can make sudden. But we live in a day where nobody has any time to be shut up in the secret places. Everybody wants the sudden thing. But it's the secret thing that produces the sudden thing. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel that wind now. I feel it blowing. Somebody shout secretly. Then suddenly. But whether it's our secret struggles that we need to bring to God and say, God, help me deal with this. Help me process this, just me and you, before something that you could have healed secretly becomes suddenly exposed. God, I want to get this done in the secret place where you can minister, where you can touch, where you can uproot, where you can make right. Because everything that we notice suddenly started secretly and built slowly. Here's what I'm saying. It can happen suddenly, and when it does, when it does, what you've done secretly will be the treasure of the whole process. Come on, somebody. In our story, not only is there a sudden need that they bring to the prophets to speak to, but these three kings, I just want to make sure y'all know the situation here. They went through the desert and ran out of water, and they're getting ready for a war. And that's a familiar place to us, because sometimes we go through those desert seasons on our way to fight battles. And what it takes for you to get there takes so much out of you that you don't have what it takes to fight. And so the prophet comes, and he begins to prophesy, and in verse 16 he says, This dry valley will be filled with pools of water. 17. You will see neither wind or rain, says the Lord, but this valley will be filled with water. You will have plenty for yourselves and your cattle and other animals. Now let's break that down a little bit. What he's saying in those two verses, well, the first thing that he's not saying is what he's seeing. Before we get into what he says, let's get into what he doesn't say. He doesn't say the ground is dry. He doesn't say this battle is hopeless. He doesn't say this situation is desperate, although it is. So it makes me wonder if one of the reasons we get dry inside is we need to stop saying so much about what we see and start saying more about what God says. 
Y'all, this verse is really helpful for our daily lives because there's what he sees and there's what God says. And twice he says, thus says the Lord. In verse 16 and in verse 17 he says it. Thus says the Lord. And so you might be in a situation where you're like, this is terrible, but thus says the Lord. This is painful, but thus says the Lord. Am I telling you to live in denial? No, but I'm teaching you to not live in dryness because it only makes it feel drier to drive down and dig down deep into things that you see when what you see doesn't match what God says. And I know a lot of y'all stop watching here because y'all think that this is the abracadabra, hocus pocus part of the teaching of the word of God, but it's not. This is the greatest skill that I get you to learn in regards to dealing with the disappointments in your life, the dry places in your soul, and even the needs that you have that you tend to meet in all the wrong ways it's to begin to, ooh, come on. This is, this is thus says. That's the shift I want you to make. This is thus says. Both are important. The this is enables you to deal with where you are. The thus says when you get a word from God and hold on to it and believe God for it and walk in it and work with it. The thus says the Lord is what gets you from this is to what can be. And I believe there are some of you watching today who've been so stuck in this is that you forgot to say thus says. Come on somebody. When you don't feel like a cocker, you make yourself a victim and you forget that you are a victor. It's just a matter of time till you feel dry. So here's the switch you have to make. This is unfair. That's victim language. Thus says the Lord, he will repay me in double for all of this trouble. See, the thing about God is he'll tell you to do crazy stuff that completely contradicts what makes sense in your own logical mind. We talked about that three weeks ago, but I'll prove it again in verse 16. Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. A ditch for what? It's dry. I don't need a ditch in a dry place. Not yet. But thus says, this is a getting ready moment for you. Thus says the Lord. I love the word of God. How about you? Because it's what God uses to dig in my spirit to prepare me to receive what he's bringing into my life. Come on somebody. Although digging doesn't feel good. Not for the digger and not for the dirt. Come on listen to me now. It's amazing what God says. He says there's going to be water flowing from the land of Edom. Isn't that a crazy place for water to flow from? The same desert they marched through to begin with. Isn't it crazy how sometimes God will bring the greatest blessing from the driest places? The same desert that you just marched through for seven days and became dehydrated from, that same place is where the blessing's gonna flow through. Thus says the Lord. The same comfort with which God is comforting you in this season is gonna be the same comfort that you're gonna give others when you get to your place of service. The same lesson that you're learning in these seasons are gonna be the same lessons that turn into blessings for other people that you help when you get through this season. Come on, somebody. It's amazing what he told them to do. Dig ditches in the valley. Now, it's debatable whether he meant literally or figuratively, but I really don't care because it speaks to a mindset for me, and I'll get into that more next week. But whether they really start digging all night to get ready for the rain or not, what I know for a fact is it was an expectation, and he tells them to do that. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water. He also tells them what God intends to do. But the thing that he didn't say, which I found almost as interesting as what he did say, is how it would happen and when it would happen. That's interesting because they went seven days without water. That's a long time, long enough to be desperate. Seven days, I don't even know how they stayed alive that long if they've gone through all their rations. I mean, we're talking about water. Not Wi-Fi, Corbin, water. Y'all, we have to realize how weak they were in this moment in order to really appreciate the value of the word that God gave them. Because there's always a part in us that'll listen to a word like this and go, yeah, but my situation, no, we're talking about water. No water and it's over. That's how bad the situation is. And so if God's word came the way that they wanted it to come and say, the Lord came upon Elisha and he began to prophesy. And when that happened and he prophesied, make this valley full of ditches and all of a sudden the water came. But the Bible doesn't say that the water came sudden. 
The Bible says that an instruction was given. Now sometimes before the intervention of God, there's an instruction for you. So I'm wondering, what is God calling you to dig today? Come on somebody. After what God taught me from this word, I've learned to ask people a secondary question. What God do for them? That's my first question. My second question is I wonder what they dug for God to do that. I don't just wonder what God do for them anymore. I wonder what did they have to dig through to get to where they are. And y'all can do yourselves a real favor when you see somebody that God did something great for and you want God to do that for you. If you get a chance to talk to that person, ask them. What did you have to dig for God to do that? Because the water came suddenly. And if you only showed up in the sunlight of the next day, you would have mistakenly believed that the water came when the word came. And if you just think that everybody who's blessed, and everybody who has peace, and everybody who has influence, if you just think that God just did that, then you've missed the point. God did it when they dug it. Come on, somebody. That's why I love this verse, because it means that God is sovereign. He did it. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can make it rain. Nobody else can tell the sun to rise. Nobody else can drive the darkness back but God. God did it. They dug it. It didn't flow the moment that the prophet spoke. Thus says the Lord, water flow. No, water will flow when you dig. Dig where? This valley? Wait, a valley that's dry? A valley that's low? A valley that's painful? A feeling that I can't shake? Yeah, the lower and the deeper the valley, the more water can hold. I'm telling you, this isn't your breaking, but it's your breakthrough. This is a valley, but thus says the Lord, He is my shepherd, I shall not want. Thus says the Lord, He is preparing a table right now. Come on, somebody. The only thing the devil can do, since he can't take the word of God away from you, he'll try to get you so weary and so discouraged that you stop digging. Because it's dry, you can't dig, you're dry. That's why I'm digging, because I'm dry. That's why I'm praising, because I'm dry. That's why I'm doing it, because I'm dry. Digging or drought? You'll have to decide in this moment of your life. Digging or drought? I'll be digging, because I've done drought, and I don't like it. We've done bitterness. We've gotten down to the bottom of the bitterness. And guess what I found? It's dry. We've done blame. Do y'all want me to keep digging here or dance like my bros? But hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. See, I notice a lot of preaching. It's like they're dancing around what's really happening rather than digging through what's really causing it. And so this happens in parts, right? The word comes suddenly, the musicians start playing, and the word came suddenly. So let's talk about the steady hand of the diggers who held those shovels. That's where sudden blessing comes from, a constant digging. Are you saying I have to work my way to a relationship with God? Because I got set free from that. I grew up in church and it burnt me out. So don't start telling me I should start reading 17 chapters of the Bible a day. Because I tried and I don't like it. Because I couldn't pronounce all those names of people you had me read. And it got real boring in Leviticus. Y'all, I'm not talking about working your way to God. I'm talking about digging your way into water where grace flows, where joy flows. And let me tell you when it's gonna flow. When it's supposed to. And let me tell you what you can do in the meantime. Because I think a lot of us are really confused about what we need to surrender in our lives. We don't need to surrender the desires that God has put in our heart if God put them there. What we need to surrender in this season is the way we thought it was supposed to go. Somebody needs to hear that. Let go of how you thought it was supposed to go. And while you're at it, let go of when you thought you're supposed to get there. Because the issue isn't will God, it's when God. And it doesn't just depend on what he wants to do. It depends on what you're willing to do until God does. Come on, somebody. The issue isn't whether God will reveal this or not. The issue is what will you do until God gives you clarity. Because if you bail right now, if you act nasty right now, if you cope with stuff that's going to put you in a cage later right now, then when God gives you clarity, you won't be able to act on it because you'll be so constrained by the decisions that you made while you were waiting. The issue isn't will God. The issue is not his sovereignty. It's you're supposed to. Let me ask you a question. When it flows, are you going to be where you're supposed to be? In the valley? Digging ditches? 
in the valley. I feel it coming suddenly for y'all. Because you won't see wind and you won't see rain. But it's gonna come suddenly. And people are gonna start coming asking, can I have some of that water? Maybe you started digging a decade ago. That's why God's doing it right now. Because you dug it. You dug it, God did it. You dug it, God did it. I had a secret. I had a secret prayer line. I had a secret reading plan. I had a secret ambition. But I surrendered it to God. God and I gave up what others thought and I got serious about his word. I dug it. God did it. We're gonna be looking back from something not many days from now saying you dug it. God did it. Come on somebody say it. when I dig it God can fill it. Not when I feel it when I dig it. When I don't feel it God will fill it. And this y'all was a word from God. So thank you for watching Tipley to Catch and Release. Make sure to tune in next Sunday for another verse of the week. Take care, God bless, and we are gone. Oh wait, so I have to update y'all real quick. I'm really sorry that I couldn't get last week's verse of the week out. I really tried to get it out, but me and Corbin had an out-of-town baseball tournament. But guess what? Corbin's team ended up winning. So here's some photos right here. So big shout out to DE9U for winning the championship. See y'all.